This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this circular pop-out photo effect that you can use as avatars and, and profile pictures and things like that using GIMP. And this is something I use often myself for my own profile pictures and I've used it throughout my blog posts and, and ebooks that I've written. If you've consumed that you'll see I often include this sort of design with my work. So I'll be showing you how you can do that here with GIMP. So I'll go ahead and open up GIMP here to get started. By the way, if you'd like to know how you could update GIMP with this new interface, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. The first thing we're, we're going to want to do is import our image into GIMP. And we're going to right, uh, right click on the layer and make sure you have an alpha channel added where it says add alpha channel. If you can click on that, if it allows you to go ahead and click on it. If not, that means you already have an alpha channel and you're good to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate of this layer uh, where it says right here, uh, create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. Go ahead and click on that. And we're going to take the one down here and just turn off the visibility for now. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool and I want to put a circle going over a portion of the uh, person right here. And uh, we're going to have like like the head and part of the hand sticking out. So I'm going to start the circle. I'm going to put the cursor where I want the center of the circle to be, which will be right about here. And then I'll click and drag. And after I start clicking and dragging, I'll hold uh, control and shift. And if you'll notice, it starts creating a perfectly round circle that starts from the center of the mouse click and goes outward. And I want to put this circle, I'd say right about here is pretty good because this leaves out part of the head that'll be sticking out from the circle and this part of the of the uh, the hand as well which will also be sticking out. And once we've done that, I'll just go ahead and click enter to create a selection there. And then I'll go to select um, invert. And once we've done that, we could just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that segment. Or if you're using uh, Mac, you can go to edit. Uh, I believe it's clear. There should be clear somewhere under here. Yeah, there it is clear. But everyone else, Windows, Linux, just press delete on the keyboard. And once we've done that, we can invert the selection again. We'll go to uh, select, invert it back. And what I want to do now is I want to put sort of like a, uh, a white border around the back of this here. So I'm going to create a new layer, create a new layer and add it to the image. We're going to choose transparency. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to put this layer beneath the pasted layer up here. And then I'm going to go to select and grow. And the amount of pixels you should grow this depends on the size of your image. I'm just going to test it out with 20. That's what I used previously. Okay, 20 is pretty good. You'll notice the selection grows around the uh, original circle. That's how thick the border is going to be. I think that's a pretty good thickness right there. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And then I'll go to edit, fill with background color. And if you notice here, I have white set as the background co uh, color. So I'll go to edit, uh, fill with background color. And now that that's added there. So in order to make it so that the head is sticking out of the circle and this part of the uh, the hand and the arm down here as well, what I'm going to do is let's go to select none and I want to take our original layer down here and I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, create a duplicate of the layer. Go ahead and click that button and I'm going to turn the visibility of that on and I'm going to raise this all the way to the top and I'm going to bring the opacity of that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over the head right here. I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. We want to create a selection going around the head here and the hand and then delete everything outside of that selection so that we're just left with this here. Maybe I'll increase that a little more. So to do that, I'm going to grab the paths tool, which is over here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start somewhere in here where uh, the part of the, the, uh, the, our subject is within our circle. So right here, I'll start, I guess, right about there. And then I'll come up here to where the uh, corner of the ear is and then I'll just click and drag to create a curved line. And I'll take this handle and bring it back in so that closes that out. And then I'll just click and drag to create another curve right here. And I'll do the same thing. I'll put that handle back in there. Do this over here. Do the same thing up here. We're just clicking and dragging to create a curved line that matches the edge of our subject there. Do the same thing right about here. And I'm just going to go around and do this for the entire segment until it comes back around to the uh, where it goes back into the circle. So I'll speed this up and I'll catch up with you then.
Okay, so now you can see I've created an outline going around the outside of the uh, subject's head here where we're going to want to crop out um, that segment of it. Normally, I would close this back up right here, but I also want to include this hand right here as well. So I'm just going to continue this selection going down here and continue on with what, I was, what, I, with what I was doing down here, and then I'll finish the shape up. So I'll go ahead and outline that, and I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so I finished outlining everything. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the opacity of the image back up to 100%. And if you notice, I, I was playing around with the opacity a little bit as I was going around outlining the subject. And it, it may help for you to do that as well. Sometimes it's better for me to just see what I'm trying to trace if I have the opacity all the way up. So what I'm going to do to finish up the shape, I'm just going to create more points leading back up to the starting point. And then once I get up there, I'll hold control on the keyboard and click on the starting point to finish it up. And then I'll press enter on the keyboard to create a selection. And once I've done that, I'll go to select, invert, and then press delete on the keyboard. And then we can go to select, none, and then grab a different tool to get rid of those, those nodes. Grab like the move tool or something. And you can see we've created our little pop out effect coming out of the circle. Now there's one final thing I'd like to touch on that you should pay attention to with your images. You notice that there's some negative space here between the forehead and the sunglasses. That should be cropped out as well, but it's still in there. So make sure to go back and crop out your, um, your negative space areas if you have to. I'm going to go in there and just do that real quick. Grab the uh, crop tool. Create a line going right there. Close that in. Another line going right here. Another one right here. And then I'll just hold control and click on the starting point and I can just drag that line down and adjust the uh, the shape of it using the handles. Press enter to create the uh, the shape and then I'll just I'll just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Again, if you're using Mac, go to edit, clear. Now we'll go to select none. I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And I'm actually just going to grab the move tool. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. What we're going to want to do now is add a background to this. So I'm going to turn off the um, I'm actually going to right click on this and go to new from visible. I'm going to create an entirely new layer out of everything you see here. And then this new layer, I'm going to turn off the visibility of everything else. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to change the, uh, the size of the canvas here so we can use that as a background. I'll just go to image, uh, canvas size. And depending on what size is already there, it looks like the height is 1280. Maybe for the, uh, the width, I'll use something like, uh, 2400. Go ahead and click, uh, resize. And now I could uh, go to this layer over here, this new layer, and I'll go to uh, layer, auto crop layer. And now I can grab the alignment tool and click on our image and make sure you have it set to relative to the image. And I just want to make sure I have it centered up on the center of the page here like that. And what I could do now is I want to choose like a background color. If you want, you could use a, a, a background image. You could click and drag that into Inkscape and use it as an image like I did in the thumbnail. I'm just going to use a color. I'm just going to go to the color picker up here and find something like maybe like a shade of uh, blue. Something like that. Yeah, that works. I'll go to OK. And I'll go to New Layer. And uh, Layer Fill Type, I'll just use Foreground Color. Go ahead and choose that. Click and drag this beneath the uh, visible layer. And there you have that. Let me just get rid of that. Go to the move tool. And there you, there you pretty much have it. That's how you can create this uh, circular uh, pop-out photo effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.